So you either have good habits or you have bad habits. Either you have habits that serve you or habits that take you off your purpose and your profit. So how do you develop these type of habits according to the Bible? Well, let's unpack that in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, now I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? My name is smart guy, Matt Zapala here. Hailing to you from the actual office today. Uh, we're wrapping up a Saturday workshop. We just started to open up our offices here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, which is a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago, where we do entrepreneur workshops for people, those entering the insurance industry. And we just thought to shoot this out of our office today because we have a whole packed day this afternoon, this evening, and I have a chance to uh, record this later for our Sunday morning uh, Bible studies, which leads me to remind you that we have a contest to ask you to help us name these Sunday night Bible studies because we have all sorts, by the way, here's a couple of the categories of titles for our Sunday night Bible studies, and we're having you give your input on what these Sunday night Bible studies should be. Again, once you reach 75,000 subs, we're going to pick the right title from the right winner, and we're going to give that winner a $500 uh, a gift card, again, and a $500 deposit or $500 donation to your favorite church or charity in your name. So again, that's something we're gonna do at 75,000 subs. Okay, so you are an entrepreneur. You want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, but you want to do it based on biblical principles and standards. Well, here's the bottom line. Oftentimes people have a lot of things going on. They got a lot of things that they want to consider. There's a lot of shiny objects that can distract somebody from their pursuits of their goals. So we just have to really label it down to what is the most important to you, which is your priorities. And then once you label those priorities, then you have activities to help support those priorities. And when you do these activities, then it leads to results of those activities. And then it's a rinse, repeat cycle. So according to scripture, we have been diving into Proverbs. And now we're going to go into Ecclesiastes. Uh, previous weeks we did Proverbs. This week we'll go into Ecclesiastes. And these are the writings from King Solomon, the richest and wisest king who ever lived. How many of you have ever said, hey, in my entrepreneurial dreams and goals and desires, I want to pursue real estate. I want to pursue insurance. I want to produce taxes, uh, Bitcoin. You want to produce ministry. You want to produce music. All these different things end up on your plate. So let's go into Ecclesiastes chapter 2 about what King Solomon says about this. It reads here in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 9. He says, I became great and excelled more than all who were who before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. But if you go into the next verse... At the end of that verse in chapter 10, it also reads like this. All indeed, all was vanity and grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. In other words, what King Solomon is saying, he pursued too many things. He got away from his purpose. Yes, he did get uh, 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 things. He pursued, matter of fact, if you read chapter 2, verse 1 through 11, he actually pursued six to eight different opportunities. And even he says, hey, at the end of the day, all was vanity. So King Solomon was looking to solve an inward problem from an outward perspective. So if you're going out there and say, listen, I want to do this, I want to do that, awesome. The bottom line is, what is it all for? Does it feed into your priorities? When you get that house, when you get that car, when you get the money, when you get the titles, when you get the business, when you get the ministry, when you build that church, whatever that is, is it really based on your godly purpose or was it just vanity? There's a thin line there between your purpose and just being vain about pursuing your goals. So let's take what he even says here in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3. He says, I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine. In other words, his flesh wasn't gratified with wine. He searched how to gratify his flesh with wine while guarding my heart with wisdom and how to lay hold on folly till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. So he actually taught himself some bad habits to try to, again, solve an inward problem with an external premise. So when you're looking at what you're doing here in terms of pursuing too many things, ask yourself, okay, which of this can I say aligns with my priorities based on what you've searched for what God wants to do in your life? And by the way, I can't say that when I first started my career, my business, that I knew what my purpose was right away. Do you know why? Because I was stuck in survival mode. So here's a thoughtful bit of recommendation from a friend. Don't put too many things on your plate. Don't try to say, boom, boom, boom. Have you ever seen somebody's business card or their bio 
on social media, they say they do this, they do this, they do this. Next thing you know, they changed the resume, things change every 12 months. They're trying to pursue too many things. They never get good at one thing. Again, looking to potentially solve an inward problem with an external source. But if it's aligned with our priority, if it's aligned with our purpose, you find that one thing that serves your purpose, that makes you feel really great, it aligns with a higher thing, a higher calling more than just pr a profit or income, that you feel great about what you, that there's a long-term legacy ramification behind your work, then consider pursuing that. So therefore you don't have so many different things on your plate, which gets you to pursue so many bills, which gets you to procrastinate, which gets you to delay a lot of different things, which takes, cause you to take on too many things. So consider that. The second thing, how do you make better decisions? <laughs> Listen, I've said this over and over again on this channel. I've said this over and over in previous episodes. I spent my 30s repaying the mistakes of my 20s. Do you know why? Because this wasn't made to wear to me later on in life. And no matter where you're at right in life, whether you're in your 40s like myself, or your 50s or 60s, or in your early 20s or your teens, that you identify that you are defined by the decisions that you make in your life and who you decide to pick, what you decide to pick. You're defined by those things. How to make better decisions. Let's look at what chapter 12 here in Ecclesiastes says about making decisions. It reads here in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 8, and I'll summarize it with this one. It says, all is vanity. So looking to serve an external purpose for the purposes of serving external purpose, all is vanity. So if you want to make better decisions, take a look at these five questions I have for you. Number one, don't lose sight of the big picture, especially when you're young. You see, King Solomon wrote these scriptures when he was older in life. He's basically about to pass away. He had a lot of great things. He started off his life as a young king, asked for the right thing, which is the right things, which is wisdom, and God blessed him with not only wisdom, but many other things that he didn't ask for. So his entire lifetime, he led the people of Israel into a world of prosperity and a land of just wealth and happiness and enjoyment. But towards the end of his life, when he started seeking other things externally, wives, external pleasures, and you even say here in scripture, that he was teaching his flesh how to enjoy wine. He's saying here, all is vanity. So don't lose sight of the bigger picture. Number two, do what is right before it's too late to correct yourself. Listen, I've learned a lot in the word, I'm sorry, I was wrong. How can I correct myself? How can we get along? How can we make things right? Let's move on and let's make the best of this. Sometimes your greatest enemy ends up becoming your best friend or best alliances or best partners down the road. If you learn to say, hey, this is where I screwed up. This is where I messed up. How do we go from here going forward and make the best out of this? Number three. Use your words like tools to shepherd and add value to others. You know, one, one thing I realized as a person that started uh, elevating as a sergeant in the Marines to running my own business, to being a father, to running a small company, to running a larger company, to running a national company, is I realized that my words meant a lot. There's an impact to our words as leaders. And if you think that you're just flippant or lazy with your words that you use, that it doesn't affect a lot of other people, you're wrong. And if you use your words as ways to sharpen yourself, as ways to sharpen, uplift, and encourage one another, listen, you have purpose behind your words, you have intention behind your words, and that fits into what God's priority and purpose is to use you as his messenger, as a vessel for his kingdom. Number four, don't try to master everything in life, just what is important. There's a lot of things I wish I could do right. There's a lot of things I wish I could have done, should have done, whatever the case may be. However, with what I have now, with the opportunities and and perspectives and folks that's coming in and out of my life, I gotta figure out what I have right now that I can leverage, I can manifest into a greater purpose, into a greater opportunities. I can't worry about, hey man, this person's a celebrity or this person got more money than I do, or this person has better opportunities in this neighborhood. All good, good for them. But for me, God has placed this in my heart, right in front of me, what are you gonna do with it? Because back to the parable of the towns, when, when much is given, or the least is given, what do you do with the much or what do you do with the least? Do you brag about it? Uh, do you humble yourself about it? Do you make the most of it? Whatever it is right now you got going on, make the most of what you have, no matter how much you think or you're comparing it to, because the only scale, the only rule that you have to is what God has in your life, not to other people. Number five, trust and obey God because he is the ultimate judge. Listen, at the end of the day, especially in this cancel culture, especially in this you know, non-politically correct environment where things are are supposed to be said and not said. Listen, the only person you need to please at the end of the day and how you can make better decisions for your life is understand that you only answer to one person and that is God. And here's what I found. If you say, I'm going to answer to God, 
everything on here on earth will fall right into place. I'm not going to say it's happened all, right all the time, but if you say, listen, I'm going to honor something greater than myself, guess what's going to happen? You're going to honor all the relationships here that you have on earth because you honor the most important priority in your life if you choose to follow biblical scripture. And the third one, you have to understand the law of timing, that there's a season for all things. Listen, probably in this era, this season of instant gratification, in this time of, oh, this person did this, this person did that, in 12 months, in 24 months, in 36 months, you think that everything's quick, everything's fast, everything's like a popcorn machine, everything, right, you put it in the microwave and bing, you get instant popcorn. That doesn't happen to your financial goals. It doesn't happen to your success. Listen, a lot of these things that you see today is what somebody did five years ago. A lot of what you observe today is what somebody did 10 years ago, what somebody did 15, 20 years ago, what somebody did in terms of sacrificing what they do on Friday nights or evenings and weekends, they put in that extra time for success. Let's take a look at what Ecclesiastes chapter three says about timing. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, time to be born, time to die, a time to plant and time to pluck. What is planted? A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, time to weep, a time to laugh etc etc there's a time for everything here's a problem with, with people in pursuing success in business an entrepreneur in your ministry whatever the case may be if i plant it today I expect to reap it today that's not the way success works that's not the way finances work if i invest a dollar today I expect it to be two dollars tomorrow it doesn't happen that way there's a time to plant there's a time to cultivate there's a time to reinvest there's a time to harvest but here's a problem everybody wants to do this all in one season and according to scripture, according to the Bible, it doesn't happen that way. So not only have patience with God, but more importantly, have patience with you. So many times people say, hey, if I don't have immediate success, I'm so frustrated, I'm so mad. I'm so upset that things aren't going my way. Hey, there's a law of timing that's at work because there's a season for all things. And here's the thing, though, if you want to become a millionaire for obviously much more greater purposes than just being an external millionaire, that you want to be wealthy to bless the kingdom. If you want all these things to happen, if you want all these things to be blessed your way for a purpose greater than yourself, well, guess what? There is a season for all things. So before I let you guys go, check out these two videos. Number one is the fastest way to lose your money according to scripture. And the second video I want you to watch is four biblical principles to make you invaluable to your company, to your ministry, to the community that you serve as an entrepreneur, check out that video too as well. With that being said, guys, what are your thoughts here on the biblical habits that will make you a millionaire according to biblical scripture here in Ecclesiastes? Drop your thoughts, your comments, your feedback, your questions. And again, we have a contest here to name these Sunday Bible studies. Again, the person that helps us come up with the name for these Sunday night Bible studies, again, you'll be awarded $500 from me to you, as well as $500 to your church or your favorite charity in your name. So that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our Facebook page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, thanks for watching the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel to help you think like a millionaire, to help you strategize like a millionaire, and so therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire according to biblical principles. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, Continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you.